This conference will now be recorded. So we'll start today the first session of uh, medical statistics. Um, I will try to do my best to simplify all the concepts of the medical statistics. I think the target group from the um, session will be, uh, I think, three groups. Uh, whoever going for an exam, uh, like uh, MRCS, EMRCOG, FRCS, or any any of these exams, um, or the people who uh, wants to understand the basic concepts of statistics in their daily life and their medical practice, reading papers and things like that, and whoever wants to start to do the, you know, you know the uh, statistical analysis and all these things. So I think these are the three groups who can benefit from uh, these two sessions. Okay, um, so I'll start why statistics uh, or why just take samples and not just uh, go to the whole population and analyze things. Um, for example, I, I want to do um, a study in the pregnant women. Why don't go for all pregnant women and give them a certain medication and see the result of it? Uh, is it doing any benefit or not? Uh, or obviously, as you might think, that's not practical. Okay, um, and uh, you know, it doesn't make any sense to give the thing to the whole population and measure it. Okay, it's exactly like you can see here in a soup. Uh, if you want to test this soup, see how much salt in it, or how is the taste, or the spice, like this. You don't you don't drink the whole soup to test it. You just take a spoon of this soup uh, and just taste it. Okay. So uh, that that's the the it's it's a very good very good analogy actually uh, about between the the uh, why we sample things, why we do statistics. And statistics and mathematics mainly, uh, both of them are about simplification and how to simplify things, not to complicate things as we might uh, feel about them. But it's not it's not like this. We need, we, we want always to simplify things. We want to check is this spoon we took from the sam from the population is this sample we have is representative to the population or not or we just have this these numbers and these things uh, by chance only by chance okay so is it by chance or is it really representative of the population okay that that is the whole idea of the mathematics and statistics and all these things is to simplify things and to make sure that the sample we have is representative of the population and we haven't just choose this uh, by chance okay that's the whole idea of the statistics basically um and that's why we we normally when we take sample of people okay and we collect information from uh, these people so our sample we have a, a sample of people and we collect information from them we put them in something like spreadsheet like this okay so patient number one drinks coffee like this uh, male or female uh, drinks how uh, how much milk um uh, what time uh, how, how much exercise they do um, wake up time uh, political you know we you do things like this so uh, you just collect information from these people and put it in a spreadsheet. And in your spreadsheet, we, we normally call uh, every row uh, an observation, and we call every column a variable. Okay, so um, that, so everybody in this in our study or ensemble is an observation. Okay, and the information we gather, we call it variables. So Coffee is a variable, gender is a variable, milk is a variable, all these we call them variables. Okay. Just I want to be clear about the um, you know the terms here and the how, how we name okay. So the single row call it observation and the information we gather, the columns we call it variables. Okay, but 
it's really, really, really important to know the types of our variables, okay? So as you can see here, these variables are different types, okay? Um, for example, you can see something like gender here is mainly male or female, isn't it? Um, so just one of two things. So that's, we we'll call this a binary variable. So it just can take one of two things, okay? Um, and something like milk consumption, uh, you can see people six cups or something every week, two cups, one cup, four cups, whatever. You can call this a, a numerical variable. Okay. That's a numerical variable. That takes a number that you can um, do a mathematical um, uh, process in it. You can multiply, you can subtract, you can do whatever in these things. Exercise as well, if you're doing um, how, how how many hours you do, wake up, uh, time, politics, you can put it in a scale. So, you know, it's it's a new, these are numerical variables, okay? I'll go back here, I'll go systematically uh, discussing the different types of these variables. So we have um, numerical variables, categorical variables, and rates and derived variables. So are really interested here in numerical and, and categorical variables. So numerical variables, these are the numbers, okay? You've seen some numbers there. So these are the numbers They can be continuous and can be discrete, okay? The, in, in the statistical analysis, there is not a lot of differences in analyzing the continuous and discrete variables. You can consider, you can, you know, consider them the same actually, both numerical, okay? So what is the difference between continuous and discrete? Continuous, something like um, weight, uh, uh, age, um, something like, you know, it, it can take fractions basically, okay? Something that can take fractions. Um, but something discrete like um, number of, um, of uh, siblings, for example. So you can't, the family can't have something like uh, three and a half uh, children, okay? It doesn't take fractions. So this, it is discrete, okay? But obviously, um, and then, you know, you, you, you've seen uh, probably in your country or in your town, uh, they might say, okay, the average number of children in the family is 2.6, for example, okay? So it's, it's, it doesn't make sense. There is no 0.6 person, okay? But you can deal with the discrete uh, variables as if it is a continuous, okay? There's not a lot of, of differences between these two, and both of them, we can call them numerical because they are numbers, okay? Um, the other type of data is the categorical data or the binary data. So categorical data is just categories, okay? It can just be two categories, okay? And um, as I mentioned before, like male and female, like gender, and like mortality, if somebody, life or death, it's just really binary. Uh, it doesn't take any other uh, category. Um, and um, something like... Um, diabetes or not, cancer or not. So, this, you know, uh, you might realize now this is a very, very, very important type of data in medicine. And we're really interested in analyzing this type of data because it's important clinically. It's important clinically to know uh, this, this woman or this man have a hypertension or not, uh, is going to survive or not. Um, and so, so it's really important. So. Uh, will be interested in analyzing binary data. Uh, categorical data, something like sport, uh, how, uh, which sports each body in, in my group or my sample uh, practice from which country. So these are more than two uh, groups, basically. It can take more than two um, uh, parameters, okay? Uh, and my categorical data, data can be even ordered data, okay? So we call that ordinal, okay? So it's not just category, it's just cat categories that can take intensity, okay? So, so something like mild, moderate, and severe, they have orders, okay? 
um, or grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four, for example, or stage one, stage two, stage three. Uh, you might think these are numbers. Yes, these are numbers, but they are not numerical because you cannot subtract or perform a mathematical uh, process in, on them. You cannot, you cannot subtract um, uh, grade three minus grade two equals grade one. It, it doesn't work like this. Okay, so it's still categories and not numbers. Okay, um, I, I hope that's clear. And it's really important. May I ask a question? Yeah. Please, um, when I want to say about the Bain score, Bain score, uh, they said that they ask a patient about Bain scoring and um, to be you know, on a scale from zero to 10. So what type of data is it? Okay, I will answer another question now. I'm not going to answer this question. <laughs> and you can re recognize or, re you know, work out what is the answer to your question. Okay, I will give you another example. Okay, I will give you the blood pressure. Okay, the blood pressure example. So, in my study, if I'm measuring the blood pressure in numbers, okay, I'll be interested, for example, in a, in a systolic blood pressure, okay? If I'm measuring it, I'm putting it in my table, this table, in numbers, this will be a continuous variable. Okay? If I put it um, or, or numerical variable, I can put it even as a continuous because it is continuous. But I will probably put it in full numbers. Okay? I'll probably put systolic is 135. I'm not, I, I will never put, I'm going to put 135 and half. Okay, although it's definitely a continuous, but I'm putting it as a, as a discrete. So I will deal with it as a numerical variable in general. Okay, but at the same time, if I'm collecting my data um, as my patient, is my patient hypertensive or not? So I'm collecting the data like, like this, uh, hypertension or no hypertension. So that's another type of data. That's a binary data now, okay? But I can um, say um, is my patient has no hypertension or normotensive or mild hypertension or moderate hypertension or severe hypertension, okay? So according to how I am collecting the data, it will differ, okay? So pain, for, you, can, you can now understand what, what, what is my point. Pain, for example, yeah. if I put it one to 100, it can be, I can deal with it as, it, as, 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 a, as a continuous thing, okay? If yes. I put it as mild, moderate, severe, this will be ordinal. This will be ordinal, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Thank you. Our okay, so um, another question, please. What? Sorry. Another question, please, asking okay. about relation between, um, in, in some study, there was a pregnant woman, 100 pregnant women, and they have made the relation between the pregnant woman BMI and the outcome of the fetal weight. Okay, so the type of data, BMI, is what type of data? And the fetal weight, it will be continuous data, or can I say discrete data? So the, 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 the statistical analysis for this, it will be numerical, uh, continuous or discrete, it's not going to make a big difference, okay? It's the same tests you choose uh, in these um, in these types of data be my they are numbers okay if it is numbers if you have in your data sheet BMI as a number i will deal with it as a numerical okay if i have it in my data sheet as underweight normal weight um uh, and the uh, you know borderline obesity grade one obesity grade three obesity this will be ordinal okay according to what i have in my data sheet okay so you can okay so if it, 
yeah so if they give me the woman weight in kilograms so i will choose it in the yeah. numer i will deal with it that numerical data but yeah. if they give the type the class of obesity okay so i will it will be ordinal or ordinal. Yeah. Yeah. oh okay okay yeah. thank you very much okay you're welcome uh so 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 i know sometimes it's confusing because one variable can be any type of data like hypertension you've seen here hypertension we've seen the obesity or the weight we've seen uh, the pain score so you need to know what type of data you're collecting okay and even that's an advanced bit but even in your when we do the statistical analysis at the end of the study when we do it okay we can manipulate these types i can convert one type to another type as you've seen with the blood pressure okay i can convert the continuous data i've collected from blood pressure to a binary or categorical or ordinal okay and i can derive new variables like i've collected the heights and weights i can drive a new variable like bmi okay so i can manipulate my data okay to help me in the statistical analysis okay so but it yeah, is important. yes i do yeah, yes i do i do know that this um in real life so the sex that would be done but um for the exam purpose or from the exam point of view actually they used to ask those questions i've asked yeah, uh, they right. will give you type of data they will give you like uh, in one question they will ask about the pain scoring and yeah. they say that the pain score is divided to mild moderate severe or in another question they will give you that the study have um they have data of the study a pain scoring from uh, on a scale from zero from one to ten okay like that so i'm asking for the exam point of view thank you okay. very much dr muhammad so so obviously they are telling you what type of data so it's it's not difficult to 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 guess if they didn't tell you in the exam uh, you can guess it's it's easy if they say weight it's probably continuous if they say gender it's probably binary if they say mortality or having the disease or not it's binary if they say type of sport they play or country they are from it's it's categorical okay it's it's not you know you can guess the type of data okay and in real life when you do the statistical analysis you can manipulate the types yeah i'm i'm i'm, I'm glad you've you've we've spent some time here because it's it's an important thing okay but i would really appreciate if you take notes of your questions and you can ask them at the end um so i will i can carry on with the uh presentation and you can ask me any question at the end okay so again um just to uh, highlight that that's an observation every single patient is a single observation and the characteristics we we collect in the study we call them variables okay and we've discussed the types of variables in details and thank you very much for the questions for the really important questions um and now you you, you know you, you can think out of the box and think about um uh, how how can we manipulate the variables and how can the examiners if you're going for an exam manipulate the questions and um you know change the variables for you okay so um that's another concept actually when you when you when you're doing a study you normally have an outcome of interest okay and the other variables you probably consider them as an exposures okay that's a really important uh, concept okay when you when you collect that of you from your sample which is we hope it is representative of the population okay you have several variables but you are interested in just one outcome probably just one outcome you might be interested in more than one but you normally, when you analyze the data, you're usually interested in one outcome, okay? And you have several exposure or one exposure, okay? So you might have several exposures or one exposure. So for example, um, this guy who's collected this data, he's interested in the homework hours, how much time the students spend in homework, okay? 
and he he wants to know is the sleep time can affect this is the alcohol consumption can affect the homework is the uh, loving mass can affect the outcome or not okay so he, he wants to think about this so, so we call these exposures and we'll call this outcome okay um that's another example okay so um another one collected another set of data or he's the same person with the same set of data he is now interested in sleep time okay so he, the sleep time is his outcome okay and he wants to think about the effect of the homework time and the alcohol consumption and the mass love mass love um, scale and the outcome and the outcome of the interest was his sleep time so we might have um, it's according to what you want to analyze or the, your outcome of interest. Okay, so some variables or one variable will be your outcome, and the rest of the variables will be the exposure. You want to measure how much this exposure is affecting are affecting your outcome. Okay, I know a lot of time, unfortunately. Uh, this is so confusing because it's it's easy to say outcome and exposure, okay, but other people give them other names. So sometimes they call outcome as a response or dependent variable or Y or case control group, and sometimes they call the exposure explanatory variable or independent variable or X or risk factor or treatment group, okay? So uh, don't get confused we throw out our presentation today and tomorrow we'll call them outcome and exposure these are other names it's it's sensible you can call the outcome as a response because that's a response of something happened to it or dependent it is depending on the other thing on the other things it's why because if you plotted x and y probably you bought the x uh, and the x if you are plotting it in 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 a, in a graph i mean it will be the y so we'll see the x so we'll see the y we'll see these graphs and these plots don't worry and if you're doing a case control study you call the outcome as a case control group or and uh, and the exposure will be three don't worry, don't worry about this these names okay we'll call them outcomes and exposures and if you are an exam or doing a statistics or whatever um they're not going to give you uh, dependent or independent or something like that. If they gave you, you know, the dependent is depending on other things, so probably that's the outcome. Okay, so we'll call them outcome and exposure. Um, again, I will just keep putting this because it, I know uh, it's sometimes confusing. These are the variables. The observation is the row, the variables are the columns. And variables, are, as I mentioned before, there are uh, maybe different types, as we've discussed, different types of data. Um, and um, one of them can be outcomes, some of them can be outcomes, and some of them can be exposures. Again, they can, they can be, as I mentioned before, different types, mainly numerical, categorical, okay? Um, categorical, we are really interested in, in binary because probably this is the most common things we are interested in uh, in categorical data as an outcome okay so you know you know now the difference between outcome and exposure so we are really interested in binary outcomes okay um, but we might have categories but in exposures not normally as an outcome okay uh, continuous data can be uh, an outcome or an exposure uh, whatever, and we'll discuss that. Uh, there is another uh, type of data is rates. It's like survival rate and derived variables. We'll speak about them um, uh, in the next uh, presentation, basically. Okay, but the most common things are most common things we are interested in are the numerical and categorical data. Okay, I'll start now um, discussing. Um, I, I told you that the idea of, this, of the statistics uh, and the mathematics is to simplify things, okay? 
So I'll start now discussing how I can communicate um, the uh, the data within the sample I've, 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 I have to the readers or the, to the other people, okay? How to simplify this, okay? How to present it to the other uh, people or, or, or how to display it, okay? So for example, if I have a categorical data, like for example, I have patients, uh, some of them have delivery, cesarean, forceps, normal delivery, and I want to give the numbers to uh, the people, I can put it in a, in a, in a chart, okay, in a, in a picture, okay? Uh, the most common picture I can use, uh, or one of the most common forms uh, of pictures I can use displaying a categorical data is what we call the bar chart. I know you might be really very familiar with that, okay, and it it, it looks intuitive, uh, but the part chart with separate parts, not not you know um, not continuous bars, is an appropriate way of uh, displaying categorical data, as you can see, and you can see the categories here and the frequencies here, okay, how many of the uh, of each category. Okay, and this bar chart obviously can be horizontal like this, can be vertical, it can be any shape, any appropriate shape you can choose. Okay, but that's how you can display a categorical uh, variable. Okay, um, the other way of displaying a categorical variable is a pie chart. Okay, it's, it, it's, we know, we all have seen pie charts and we know that we can display this categorical variables in, in a pie like this, and every part displaying the proportion or the number of the cases um, uh, in each category, okay? So that's how to display a categorical data or to communicate the categorical data you've collected in your sample to the other people and to simplify things because we have agreed that that's the whole idea of the statistics, okay? Um, about the numerical variables, uh, you've seen this, that's what we call the histogram, okay? Um, so uh, here we can see the frequency, and here we can see, for example, this can be arrival per minute, for example, uh, and uh, after how many minutes people can arrive, so probably, uh, two people arrived after uh, one and a half minutes, or uh, most of the people arrived here around four, take, took four minutes to arrive, okay? Most of the people here at the center, um, probably, this is probably 12 people arrived uh, be immediately after four, immediately before four, you know, that's how you display a numerical variable. Uh, that, that's what we call a histogram. Okay, that's another histogram for something very common. We collect this data about the age, uh, have a sample, uh, have here, for example, um, about five persons, so five people between 50 and 60 years old, okay? Um, and that's, again, a histogram, okay? Uh, it's not a something, uh, you know, we call this a histogram. That's the name of this graph. The other way of uh, displaying this numerical uh, variable is you can come here and put, a, put just a curved line or a broken line or whatever, just a line instead of putting in bars, okay? So now you can just put it in, in a line like this uh, instead of putting it in a histogram, okay? Um, and you will see this uh, picture again, okay, in the next few, um, uh, uh, slides, okay, and you might have seen this before a lot, and you've heard about what is normal and what is skewed and what thing. Well, we'll discuss this later. I'm just now discussing how to display the different types of data. Okay, there is another way of displaying uh, a numerical data. Okay, and other than other than displaying them in a, 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 a curved line like this or a histogram, you can display them in, in a something we call it box and whiskers plot. Okay, so that's a box. Okay, 
and the whisker means this this is a whisker of the cat okay uh, in humans we call it mustache so that's a box and that's that's a whisker okay so it's a box and whiskers okay and that's a way of displaying the data okay you just put uh, the data here the median usually here the upper quartile here the lower quartile here that's a whisker and that's a whisker and that's the upper extreme of the data and that's the lower extreme of the data okay so that's a, 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 a well-known way of displaying a numerical data what all these things mean okay i will discuss this later today in the in this presentation okay but i'm just showing you how can you display a numerical data okay that's a very famous way of displaying this uh, type of data another way of displaying your data uh, it's something we call a cumulative frequency distribution uh, and that's uh, how you display um, the data against time okay something like uh, survival rate or survival probability against time so for example you have cancer stage one two three four and you follow the number of these patients or the probability of survival of these patients with time okay obviously pa patients in in stage one they die slowly or less frequently of the pro probability of their death is less than stage four and stage two and three uh, are in between okay but this is um, a very very famous curve or very famous plot okay um, in statistics we call it kaplan meyer uh, plot and it display this survival rates in cancers and other things um, very similar to this okay um, so that's another way of displaying data okay we call this a kaplan meyer uh, plot, uh, and it's very famous as well with cancers. Okay, so that's another way of displaying the data. Um, if you have, um, now you, you wanna, uh, wanna think about uh, displaying relations between two variables, okay? When, when, when I say the word variable, I want you to go the first few slides and think about this spreadsheet and variables are columns okay so now um, i want to display the relations between two variables so if they are categorical you just put them in a table or call it contingency table okay called it's th that's the name of this table it's called contingency table just male females and um, these males have uh, usually like to have dogs as a bet uh and just few of them have cats females looks like they prefer cats and you have totals here at the end uh how many males here how many females how many dogs uh these two groups have called just a contingency table okay and that's a way of simplifying or displaying a relation and that's the whole idea of statistics and mathematics okay um, uh, uh, if you have two continuous variables, okay, or two numerical variables, you can just put them on a plot, okay? You call this a scatter plot, okay? If you have a variable height and a variable weight, you can just put every point of this is a single observation, okay? Again, I'm repeating these words again and again and again. The word variable and the word um, uh, observation. Okay, so each point is observation and the height is a variable and the weight is a variable. And from where we got this data, we got this data from our spreadsheet, which have columns, variables, and rows, observations. So that's a person here who have, uh, who's probably 135 centimeter, and the weight of this person is about uh, 75 uh, kilogram. Okay, so that's a single observation. These are variables, and this is how to uh, display or um, plot the relation between these two numerical variables, or yeah, two numerical or two continuous variables. 
Um, another way displaying time that that's very similar to Kaplan Maya, but that's saying deaths here instead of survival. So you might notice actually that this is probably flipped upside down. It's the reverse of the Kaplan Meyer. Uh, that's from a, a very recent paper about the coronavirus, just uh, describing the uh, death in hospital in these drugs, the hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin and all these things. And they show that the deaths are more here in these co the two combination uh, and less in just uh, azithromycin alone. It's just something very similar to Kaplan Meyer. Um, uh, blot. Okay, fine. So, what we've done so far, um, we said we have a sample, and these samples we have observations, and every observation has some variables, and we've discussed different types of variables, and, um, uh, and what is the differences between them, and how can we manipulate them, and how can examiners manipulate these variables in the exams uh, and uh, how to display or communicate each variable with our readers or uh, putting them in papers or whatever and how people put them in papers basically and graph them uh, how can we uh, describe the relationship between two variables but let's now uh, think about how we describe each variable, not just in graphs, how we describe them in numbers, how to simplify each variable. Okay, so if I have a numerical variable, um, how can I describe it to the other people? Okay, um, rather than just putting it in a graph, you can put it in a graph, and you can describe it in numbers in your uh, writing, or you can read it in other people's uh, papers. Okay. Uh, so, in numerical variables, have you can describe them in, in, in two respects. Something called central tendency and variability. Okay. You need to know how much of the data concentrated around the center and how much the data are okay and that's why we have these terms okay so um, for example i will give examples because the the the, the easy thing the easy thing in statistics is just to give examples i would say this is uh Something like grade um, uh, in an exam. Okay, how can you describe this group of grades? How can you describe the central tendency of this this group of data? Okay, um, so someone scored nine, someone scored three, one, eight, three, six. So we can take what we call the average. Okay. So the average is the sum of all these numbers uh, subtracted by the number or the n of the group. So nine plus uh, nine plus three plus one blah, 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 uh, uh, subtracted by six it will give you five. So that's the average. What we call this the mean. Okay, and this mean this one of the thing that we can describe with it the central tendency of our group, because that's the average, okay? So the mean is the average or the norm, basically, and we can add up all values, find the total, and divide it by the number of this, uh, of the sample, okay? Another thing to describe the center of my sample is something called median, okay? And the median is just the middle value, basically. It's just the middle value. So you have to arrange them from the smallest value to the big, the biggest value, okay? And take the middle number, and that will be the median, okay? So, but in, in a sample like this, it has even number, okay? Uh, you don't have a middle value. You can just get the two middle values and subtract them by two. So three plus six, 
subtracted by two, it, it equals four and a half, four point five. Okay, so that's just another way of describing the center of my sample. Okay, so a mean, the mean is a, is, a, is a way, median is another way. The third way is what we call the mood. Okay, the mood is the most frequent value in my sample. So I have I still have this sample, okay, the same. Someone scored three, nine, one, eight, three, six. The most frequent one is three. So the mode of the sample is three. Okay, so these are the three terms or three concepts uh, or three ways uh, by them I can describe the uh, center of my numeric numerical variable okay um, you can use any of them okay but in, in certain circumstances uh, one of them is better than the others okay so sometimes you can just use the mean Sometimes you can use the median. It's not common that can use the mode. I will say, I will tell you when you can use the mean and when you can use the median. Normally you use the mean, but sometimes we need to use the median. And you will, will be surprised as most of the papers will call the median, okay? And very rarely we have, we have the mode. I will tell you when, okay? The range is just describing the difference between the highest and lowest uh value basically so it gives me an idea about the variability or how 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 uh, much my um, numbers is spread around the uh, central value okay how much i have a spread so that's why i give the first the highest number minus the lowest number i'll give me eight okay uh, so that's how, how much things are spread this is some sort of describing the variability as well. So uh, I, I've told you in order to describe a numerical variab uh, variable, uh, you should describe the center and describe how much other things spread, okay? Uh, or away from this center, okay? And these are some terms and some ways of describing the center. Um, again, I will just run through this quickly mean is something um like the like a balancing point actually because you um, add all these things and multiple uh, and subtract by the number of the symbol it's like um, um a balancing point but you might notice here if we have a very extreme number very far away from the center of my um symbol okay and we call this outlier okay it's called outlier because it's very far away it can really affect the mean okay because i'm adding a very high number to the rest of the numbers so it will shift this balancing point towards the outlier okay again if i have an outlier if i have something it's not just uh, 40 uh, to 45 if there's 100 and all my symbol is here my symbol will the my symbol mean will really be shifted towards the outlier okay and that's why sometimes we really prefer to use the median because it give us the mid point okay so mean is really affected by outlier so it's not the best thing to describe the continuous or the numerical variable um, variable if it is if there is there there are, there are a lot of outliers or there is outlier okay we prefer median and 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 that's why again okay if you have you this is your symbol okay um, if I use median uh, and I, I had an outlier this is the same symbol but just added one outlier to it so the median will be you know probably the same or just shifted a little bit but if i use mean here added 40 to all these numbers okay to eight six seven uh four and two and these things my my mean will be really here will be shifted here 
and it's not going to be representative of the center of my sample okay that's why we have the median and the mean okay the mean is the logical thing is the balancing point is the best thing i can use but i cannot always use it okay in all numerical variables okay my numerical variable should be something like that like this okay has a real central tendency or like the bell curve okay to use the mean okay but if it didn't have the bell curve uh, uh, and the histogram bell curve shape and has a lot of outliers or one outlier i cannot use the mean i should use the median okay that's really important in your life in your practice in your statistics and it's a very important exam question for, uh, as well if you're going for a question uh, for an exam okay so if you have um what we call a, a, a assemble with outliers or none not normally distributed and i will speak about the normal distribution later today or non-parametric data and i'll speak about this again today you you should use the median instead of using the mean okay and i've mentioned why uh, that, that that that's the normal distribution okay that's what we call a normal distribution so it's it's normal in life okay it's it's logical okay um if you had a sample of people um, you will probably uh, see that most of them will have um a weight around a certain number for example 70 80 kilogram okay and the rest of the whole population will have less frequencies towards the higher weight and less frequencies towards the lower weight okay but most of the population that's the normal life that's that, that is something uh, they call in statistics the central limit theorem okay all these normal variables in the life um, tend to have this shape or this curve the height of people the blood pressure the um, the weight the all these things okay usually take the this bell curve um, shape thing okay i will call this the normal distribution and this in this normal distribution the mean and the median and the mode is the name not is the same number by the way okay but when when data start to get a little bit skewed um it, it, it change okay the because we have outliers here so the mean the the moods uh, the mean will really change okay i will go towards the outliers okay but the median and the mode uh, still represent the center of my data and the same is here mean change a lot uh, when i have outliers or skewed data i usually use the median okay because of the midpoint of my sample it's 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 I, I know you might say the mode might be representative of the, of the center but um, in, in large data it might be um something you know not all data very smooth like this i might have the mood here or have a curve it's not smooth like this okay um they have variability in the in 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 their uh, observations okay so the mood is not accurate like the median okay again i know uh, i'm not you know uh uh intentionally uh, making things difficult but what we're doing we are uh, describing numerical variable to the people okay and we just want to describe uh, the center of our uh, sample actually just describe the center of our sample nothing else okay here um with, we know we, now we know how to describe the center of our sample it's probably the mean or the median but here I want to describe the variability of my symbol. Okay, that's a way of describing the variability of the symbol. We call it the range and the interquartile range. Okay, we spoke about the range before. The range is the um, highest and lowest um, 
uh, highest and lowest uh, observation number and just subtract them um, and uh, you will have the range okay but we know that the median is dividing our sample to two halves upper half and lower half because we know that our median is a middle value okay and even if it is even number like this we get the two, these two numbers and get the the uh, average of them okay or divide them by two okay so the median is dividing this our sample to two halves upper and lower there is a way of describing the variability we call it the interquartile range we'll divide the upper half in two halves and lower half in two halves we'll have four quarters we have four quarters here, quarter here, quarter there, quarter here, quarter there. And the difference between the this quarter, the upper quarter, and the lower quarter, we we'll call it the interquartile range. Okay. So if I've just subtracted 72 from um, uh, 64, uh, the number I will get 13, I think it will be the interquartile range. Okay just yeah it's 13 here just a way of describing the variability in my sample okay so um and that's the first way i'm i'm, I'm, I'm telling you about about the, the the to describe the variability okay so we've described this dependency now we're describing the variability that's the first way the interquartile range to divide my sample in four quarters and the difference between the uh, upper quarter and the lower quarter, this will be what we call the interquartile range. Okay, if I have median and interquartile range, that's very suitable to any numerical data, especially if this data is not normally distributed or it has um, an outliers. Okay, so that's the best way to describe data uh, which is not normally distributed and have outliers. Can I use these to describe normally distributed data? The answer is yes, but it's not the best way. Okay, it's not the best way to describe this uh, this data. Okay, so the best way to describe um, the normally distributed data, I will main, I will show it to you. Um, and, later but i'll show you now if i have a normally distributed data like that okay you can put it in, in, a, in a curve it looks like the normal distribution curve uh, we use the mean we usually use the mean okay and we use what we call the standard deviation i'll discuss this later okay can you but you still can use the box, box and whiskers okay the box and whiskers the box uh, i've showed you you this box and whiskers before has a median in the middle okay and the books have the first quarter and the uh, last quarter or the third quarter um, at the middle in the box and the whiskers have the other um, higher and lower quarter so you've the one you've seen is a vertical one that's a horizontal one the same is the box, box and whiskers and that's the curve um, you can show the people the data but now we know um, uh, what does it mean in this books and whiskers i've showed you before i'll show it to you again okay if i have a variable continuous variable i can put it in books and whiskers that's a vertical one the other one is a horizontal one doesn't make difference actually it's the same okay it has a median in, in the middle it has the upper quartile here and this the upper extreme as a lower quartile here and that's the lower extreme um, and we call this a whisker as I, as I showed you before uh, and that's just an outlier uh, uh, variable in my sample okay um, so that that's how uh, I we, you can understand the box and whisker um, um, uh, graph uh, now I will speak about how to describe my numerical variable if it is normally distributed, okay? So I've mentioned that the the best way of describing the center of normally distributed data is a mean, okay? 
but how can I describe the variability in my data? Okay, and non normal distributed data or any type of data can use the interquartile range and and these and the range and these things. I can still use it here, but there is another way uh, people, um, you know, um, described to to describe the variability in my sample. Okay, so someone said, okay, can I just get the distances between every single point of these observations and my mean? Okay, so I'll get all these distances, okay, from both sides and just sum them, get the sum of all of them and, uh, uh, and uh, divide it by the number of the data and I will get the average distance between all these observations in the mean. It is sensible if you got all these distances, okay, uh, from the mean and divided it by the number of the observations or the number of my sample, it will give me the average, okay? And this will be a very sensible way of describing the variability. I would say the average distance or the average um, uh, variability in my data is this number. But when people try to do this mathematically, they found a problem. The problem they found that they found that these, these uh, numbers are positive and these numbers are negative. When they sum them, they give them a zero. Okay, so when you add this to this, it will give you a zero. So that's a problem. <laughs> you cannot get, get the average of the variability in your sample. Okay, what they've done, okay, and I'm, I promise I'm, I'm not going to go deeper more than this, but they have, um, um, you know, um, multiplied all these numbers by themselves, just the, uh, to the power of two. They take all these numbers and put them to the power of two, and took all these differences and put it to the power of two, and sum them up, and they have created a, a number called the variance. So the variance is just all these distances, okay, to the power of two, um, add it to all, together, okay. So add all these numbers together, it will give you what we call the variance, okay. So the variance is all these differences, okay, uh, to the power of two, um, sum up, okay, the sum of all these numbers, okay. And when they, they, they need to go back now to the normal, so you need to take the square root of this sum, okay? So the square root of the sum of all these numbers, which is the variance, so the square root of this variance, they have called it the standard deviation, okay? And that's a way of describing the variability in a sample, in a numerical variable, okay? We call it the standard deviation. If you don't understand, that's not a problem. That's not a problem. That, but that's from where this standard deviation came. It is something to describe the variability in the sample. Okay, and it is related to the differences. Okay, um, um, and the difference the distances between all these variables. So, for example, if the average weight in my sample, I'm just speaking about the weight variable, which is a numerical variable, okay? If the average weight is 80 kilogram, okay? But I have people here with 90, 100, 150, and all these things. So the difference between 100 and 80 is 20, okay? But I have people, okay, with a weight of 60. So that's minus 20. Okay, so I've got this minus 20, minus 30, minus 40, minus 50, and this positive 20, positive, it's not going to work. If I added all of these and uh, divided by the number of the sample, I will have zero. Okay, but I, if I gave 20, um, uh, make it 40, because I have to the power of two, the 30, I will make it 90 to the power of two, and these minus 20, it will be 40, it's not going to be minus 40, okay? Uh, because it is powered, the power of two, okay, and added all of these, and then 
uh, added all of these numbers have what we call a variable, uh, the variance, I'm sorry. And if I took the square root um, of the variance, this will be the standard deviation. I don't want to get to, to, to go deeper more than this. Okay, I know uh, I know there are some questions, but I will leave them to the end. Okay, the standard deviation is a way of describing the variability of my sample. And we really found that a very nice characteristic of this standard deviation. Okay. And this character of standard deviation is one standard deviation away from my sample to the right and to the left, okay, contain probably 68% of all my observations. So if I have, um, again, an example about the weight, if I have a weight of 80 as a mean in my sample, and I have a standard deviation of 20. So people who are, who, their weight between uh, 60, which is one standard deviation below the mean, to 100, which is one standard deviation above the mean, okay? So all the people between 60 and 100, okay? Um, this will represent 68% of my sample. Okay, but two standard deviation away from the mean, so people from uh, it's 80, 60, 40, okay, so people from 40 kilogram to people for, to 120 kilogram, this will represent a 95% of my sum. Okay, that's how we found it in nature. That's the natural thing, okay. So in nature, we found uh, uh, people uh, two standard deviation away from the mean, okay, represent probably 95% of the observations in my sample. That's the, 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 the normality of this curve. And that's a standard, okay? And that's why we, it's called the, um, uh, the, um, the standard, that, that's a standard in, in all uh, normal, dis, normally dis, data okay again because that that's really important to understand and i think it's if you are interested in exams that's that that might be an exam question okay so one standard deviation away from the mean i have 68 percent of my observations two standard deviations away from the mean i have 95 percent of my observation if there are three standard deviations away from the mean Okay, I will probably have 99.7% of my observation. Okay, Th these are the characteristics of the normal distribution curve, and that's what we find in in nature. Okay, I think it's it's complex enough now, but I'm sorry, I'm going to complicate it uh, further. Okay, I'm going to complicate it more. Okay, so be prepared. Um, I will complicate it with an example. Okay, um, if I have a sample, a sample of one thousand, so I have one thousand observation, and it is about uh, the weight again. Okay, and I've decided I will just take uh, randomly ten persons from this sample, okay? So I have a sample of 1,000, but I will just take 10 of them, and I will take the, the mean of their weights, okay? So the mean of my, my big sample is about 80 kilogram, but if I took 10 random observations from within uh, my sample, which they are 1,000, okay? I will probably have a different mean, okay? Uh, which might be, but it's not going to be far away from the, the mean of my big sample, okay? It's not going to be far away, really. It's going to be something like eight, 85 or something, or 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 maybe um, 75. It will be something around my main mean, okay? 
So uh, I've created a new mean now, okay, by taking just 10 random persons from within uh, the big sample, the one south and a half. But if I repeated this 100 times, I will have a new 100 means, okay, by taking randomly 10 persons from this, these one southern people, okay? Um, and I will have now a 100 new observation, a new 100 means. But if I talk these means and put them in a graph, if you just put it, put them in a graph, in a, in a, in a something like curved graph, we actually found that these new means um, take the shape of normally distributed curve. So that's a new curve. That's a new different curve. Okay. This new curve have the new means from uh, the people of I took randomly from my sample. Okay. So even the random means um, I took from my sample, okay, took the shape of a normally distributed curve. Why I'm doing that? It's just very strange. Why I'm just taking random people uh, from uh, my sample and uh, doing new means and things like this, okay? This is to test how real is my my sample mean okay how real is my sample mean so if i put the means on a in, in a in a in in a curve these new means in a curve they will have mean of means okay which will be probably the same mean of my sample okay and it will have a standard deviation a new standard deviation okay a standard deviation of the means so this standard deviation of the means, we call it actually a new a new term. We call it the standard error. Okay. Again, you still want to ask why I'm doing that? Why I'm taking random um, means from within my uh, sample? Okay, and having a new standard deviation to my means called the standard error. Okay, I will I will describe this. I I, I will explain this. Uh, I will skip this. I will go here, here, here. I will go to this picture again. Okay, so this picture, if you remember, that was the first slide in our presentation. It's about sampling a population. Okay, so um, in order to have a representative sample okay of uh the population okay um I'm, I'm just doing the same to my sample okay i'm doing the same to my sample i've taken a sample of population but i'm taking now a sample from my sample okay to test how normal or how representative my sample to the whole population <laughs> I know it's, it's confusing, okay? Um, I don't want to confuse it anymore, but this standard error gives me an idea how real my mean, my sample mean is in relation to the population, okay? So this standard error so gives me how real or what how, how much my sample mean is have an error in in relation to the main population it's the same idea okay i've done to my sample the same thing okay i had an, a new term called uh, a standard error okay i will go back to this i'll go to it again so that's the difference between the standard deviation standard deviation is just in a sample it's a standard deviation it, it it measures the variability in one sample, but the standard error, it measures how much my mean is representative, my sample mean is representative to the main, 
to the population, okay? And that's how we um, calculated. We can calculate it randomly by randomly picking up um, random patients from the main sample, and it has a formula, and I will come back to it later, okay? That's the formula, okay? Um, and this formula, the standard error usually um, is related to the standard deviation to how much my sample is variable, okay? To how many persons in my, var in my sample. So that's, if the number of my sample um, increased, this lowers the error. And if the variability in my sample is high, this will increase the error, and I will tell you why. That's because of that. That's because, again, of the soup, okay? So if I didn't mix the soup very well, okay, I will get a sample in my spoon with high variability, okay? So the more variability increase in my sample, the more the standard error, the more the error I will have. If I get very small sample, very small spoon, the N, okay, the error will be bigger. That's from where this standard error formula came. The more variability in my spoon, that indicate that probably my, my mean have a big error range, okay? So, and again, if the spoon is big, the error will be small. If the spoon is small, the error will be big. It's it's intuitive, okay? It's intuitive, but uh, 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 you know you don't need to go that deep. But just it it, it it's good to know actually, okay? From where the standard error came, and what's the difference between the standard error and the standard deviation? Standard error is something related to my mean, okay? So it's it's, it's called the standard error of the mean. Okay, but the standard deviation is something related to my sample. It is the standard deviation of the sample. Standard error is related to the sample size, okay, and to the standard deviation. The more variability in my sample, the more I'm not sure about my mean and how it it, it represents the population. Okay, uh, the 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 bigger my sample, okay, the 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 lower the error in my mean in relation in to the population. I know it's it's confusing, but if you didn't get it, it's 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 not a big issue. But um, I hope you get it because it's 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 an important concept in 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 the statistics really. And if you have questions, you can uh, uh, ask uh, at the end, so I can repeat it again. And, and 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 from that, from the standard error, um, do you remember this? Uh, just show this again. Do you remember this? If that's the mean, uh, th this is the curve of the new means, okay? So that's the mean and standard errors here. This this is the curve, it's not, that's not the curve of the symbol, okay? That's the curve of the means, which is this normal distributed as well, okay? So that's the mean of means, and that's the standard error, which is a standard deviation of the means um, I got from the randomly selecting 10 patients from my 1,000 uh, uh, size sample, okay? If, if that's the mean, and that's the standard error, if if I have, um, a, 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 I know the number of the standard error, probably five kilogram, the standard error of, the weight of my sample is five kilogram. So five kilogram away from 80, um, that's uh, one standard error, 85, and this will be 75, and this will be 90, and this will be um, um, uh, 70. So 70, 80, 90, uh, because the standard error is, is five. So I can now say, um, uh, between 70 and 90 kilogram, I have 95% uh, of my 
uh, means or my symbol, okay? Or I can say the symbol of the new means, or I can say probably my mean is 95% lies between 70 and 90, or I can say my mean is 80 kilogram and I am 95% confident that this mean lies between 70 and 90. Okay, I, I said it in different types, but that's from where the terms confidence interval came. So the confidence inter 95% confidence interval, they calculate it normally, okay, to standard error below and above the mean, okay? So that's how they calculate the confidence interval. It's, it is by the standard error. They calculate the standard error of the symbol, okay? And they can say, we are confident that our mean is between this number and this number by 95%, okay? Um, and why we are not sure? Because we took a random sample from the whole population, okay? And we, 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 we took this concept from, again, taking random sample of our sample, okay? I don't want to go further in this, but that's from where the terms 95% confidence interval came, okay? It's from the standard error. Two standard errors below and above the mean, okay? Give us 95% confidence interval. Again, if I use the weight um, example, okay? So I will use the same curve. If I have this curve for the symbol, mean is 80, the standard deviation is 20, so that's the um, the mean 80. One standard deviation above will be 100, two standard deviation above will be 120, below 60, uh, two below will be 40. That's the symbol. That's the standard deviation of the symbol. That's the shape of the symbol. But if I spoke about my mean, okay, and the mean of means, uh, and the means are chosen randomly from my symbol, okay, uh, the standard error probably, if I calculated by the formula or whatever, according to symbol size and standard deviation, if it is five, uh, that's the, something different. That's something from which I can calculate the, I can calculate the, the uh, confidence interval. If it is, Two standard error above and below um, mean. That's I can say uh, my my. I am confident that probably my mean lies between this number and this number. And that's why you will go um, um, and read in your uh, the papers and literature. Um, we have the mean of that number but the the um, confidence interval is between so and so that's how they calculate it okay i don't want to go more than that in depth okay but i will go again to the to simplify things again okay very simple we have a sample of people we took them from population um this is an observation these are variables. We've discussed types of variables. Uh, we've discussed how to display variables, to display uh, relation between variables, and how to describe variables um, regarding how to display the, the, the describe the center of the variable. Uh, we said the mean and median and mode and all these things. How to describe the variability within the variable, which is the interquartile range uh, or um, uh, just to uh, say the standard deviation, okay, that's describe a, a numerical variable, describe the variation in the numerical variable, but how far are you sure about your mean? Something different, which is uh, related to sampling and population and all these things and random stuff, is something related to what we call standard error, um, and that's from, 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 from which we can um uh, calculate the confidence interval and we say our mean probably uh we are confident 95 percent between this this number and this number okay uh i want you to take a deep breath here <laughs> i just uh, absorb what we've said
Uh, I'll go again to this. Uh, uh, we've discussed this, if I have a spreadsheet, I've collected some data. I'm interested about the homework time people spend in, in, um, in the week. Okay, and have several exposures. I want to measure how much this exposure affecting these outcomes. Okay, and we've discussed this and why the uh, standard error is related to the variation in my sample because if it is mixed very well, my sample probably have a less variation. If um, uh, the sample is big, the error in my sample uh, in my mean will be lower. Uh, if my sample is small, the error will be uh, higher. Um, if the very, yeah, I will have said that. And again, um, I'll start now speaking about analysis of outcomes. What do I mean about, you know, by analysis of outcome? What I need to know is the numbers I have is really representative to the population or not, or just I got these numbers by chance. Okay, that's what I want to know. Okay, um, we've seen before that there are several types of variables uh, numerical, binary, numerical, that's categorical, whatever exercise that's that's binary results, pass or fail. Okay, that uh, I might be interested in how much coffee people drink, okay, in two groups. So um, what's the difference between males and females in drinking coffee? Okay, so now here I'm interested in drinking coffee. Okay, and is there is a difference between these two groups, males and females? And is this different real uh, or just due to chance? Because I have selected the wrong sample, or I haven't have a lot of variability, or a small sample, or whatever. Okay, is that difference real, or just due to chance? So that, that that that's the first thing I might be interested in. Uh, another thing I might be interested in is the milk consumption. For example, that's a numerical thing um, in relation to the type of exercise people have. So um, if you have football. Um, basketball and volleyball, for example, football is three, uh, basketball is one, volleyball is two. I have three groups here, exercises, okay? And I want to see, is there any difference between these groups in male consumption or not? So that's the outcome, that's the exposure. So the exposure variable is categorical, so there are three categories, and the outcome is numerical, okay? So I want to see, is there is really any difference between these three groups or not? Or, uh, and is this difference is real or due to chance? Okay, I might need to have an outcome like that's a numerical outcome. Okay, so I want to check if the milk consumption can change by the coffee consumption. And is this change is real or due to chance? Okay, that's what we do in statistics. Again, I can have an outcome like coffee consumption, I want to know the impact of all these variables in the coffee consumption. So, is the gender have an effect on the coffee consumption? The milk has an effect, exercise type has an effect, or the result has an effect on the coffee consumption or not? Okay, so I might have this, I might need to um, know uh, are these things have really an impact on, on the coffee, and is this impact in my sample? is real or due to chance and it can have an outcome a binary outcome like the result is the exercise type have an effect on the result or not so that's the outcome these are the exposure okay again is the coffee consumption can affect the result can have the impact on result and is this impact in my sample is real or due to chance again it can have multiple variables here I want to measure and know are these variables have an effect on the result or the, the binary outcome and if they have is this effect is real or due to chance because my sample is not 
representative to the population. That's that's what we do in statistics, okay? In statistics, we need to know are these things can affect these things, okay? And is this effect is real or due to chance? That that's as simple as it is. And that's the idea beyond the statistical tests and the whole these things in statistics. Okay, fine. I'll stop here and we'll ask you again to take a deep breath. Okay, I've just mentioned the last few slides, what we normally do in studies or statistics, or we need to know a relation between variables and other variables. We have exposures and we have outcome, and we need to know are these exposure, how much these exposures are affecting the outcomes, okay? And is this effect real or due to chance? That, that's it, basically. Okay. So um, I will revise this point again. That's that's that. I'm just you know uh, repeating myself here in this present in this slide. Uh, I'm just saying how to describe a numerical outcome. Describe this numerical outcome probably by mean, standard deviation, mean central tendency, standard deviation is the variability, standard error of means to to see how much I'm confident about my mean. Okay, my mean. Okay, so standard error of mean is another way uh, to describe how much I'm confident about my mean or sure about my mean, and from which I can have the 95% confidence interval of this mean. Okay, and that's what we normally, how do we describe um, uh, numerical variables? Oh, uh, we've discussed normal distribution. Um, that's a slide, I'm just quickly say something and you can forget it immediately uh, <laughs> after I uh, change the slide. Um, so um, um, one of the statisticians called William Seeley Gosset, uh, this man found um, that the distribution in small numbers, small numbers around 30, if I have a sample of 30 observations, okay, uh, doesn't fit in a normal distribution. It fit in, in another distribution, very similar to the normal distribution, but he called it T distribution, okay? Um, and this goes it, this gentleman, he was a statistician and brewer, he was working in a, in a beer uh, company, uh, they sell pear and things like this. Um, that's why when he published this observation, he didn't mention his name. He 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 just put his, uh, you know, instead of putting his name, he put a, a student. He just say, uh, call this a student uh, test when he when we came to the test, um, and that's from where the student T tests naming came from it, it came from from this gentleman who discovered then this new distribution or the, the, this difference between the normal distribution and the distribution in small samples okay and he called it called it t and he published his observation and he published his very famous uh, student t test he called it student t test uh, because some people said it's he, he was a student, he, he was not allowed to publish things by his name, it was not accepted by his name, or he just tried to hide his name or whatever, whatever, okay, just forget about this slide when I just go to the next slide, but that's from where the naming student T test came, okay, okay. So, I will now discuss how we analyze numerical outcomes, okay? And here, I will see in, the gr in two groups, males or, fe uh, or females, um, how the gender is affecting the coffee consumption. So basically I have two groups, it's it's binary, 
okay so there are two groups okay and every single observation has a number the coffee consumption so what i want to see is there any difference between these two groups males and females and if there is any difference is it real or due to chance okay that's what i want to do okay so what can i do these are two two groups uh, we assess the difference in mean so we can get the mean in one group and the mean in the other group okay and see is there any difference between these two means and if there is a difference is it real or due to chance okay again you can have a look at this slide and forget about it immediately after i finish it okay so what i we found that in nature differences in means okay if i took random sample from the males group a random sample from a uh, females group and get the difference in mean in these two random samples in the two groups so if i have 500 males 500 females and i took 10 male and 10 females and have the mean from here and the mean from here and get the difference okay and did that 1000 time 10 from here 10 from there mean versus mean get the difference 10 from here 10 from there mean the mean hair mean in males mean in 10 females get the difference find that all these differences in mean takes again a normally distributed curve okay and um, from this normal distributed curve i got the standard error of this differences in mean okay i can say that um probably um if the difference in means um, away two standard errors from zero, okay, so I'm 95% confident that this difference is real. If they get this, forget about it. But it's that's the idea of the t-test, okay, and that's the only test I'm going to give you. Uh, how it's done very very quickly and briefly that's how the t-test is done okay the t-test the take differences in mean between the two groups and uh, they get the standard error of this difference in means okay and put it in a curve and see um, is this difference in mean um, how far is it away from the zero if it is really very far away from the zero if it is two, more than two standard errors from the zero okay so the 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 probability of having this difference due to chance okay will probably be just five percent okay the rest of this curve okay so if the difference between the means were sure it's 95 percent uh there is a difference okay so that's a significant result that's a significant difference okay and that's from 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 this we got uh the term of b value so the b value is the rest of this curve okay the rest of this curve if it's less than five percent which is 2.5 here and 2.5 here so we know that um, we are 95% sure about our uh, this difference, okay? And that's why the more the B value is low, the more our uh, the difference is statistically significant, okay? And why we choose 5%? Why we choose 95%? That's because we've decided we'll choose this number uh, as a confidence in medicine, okay? Um, so that's that's something we just choose uh, in medicine. Um, for example, I think in um, in physics, um, in the Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland, when they do discover the new particles and all these things, they, they depend on statistics as well. Okay, but they have very 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 small b values. Okay, because they have decided in order to discover a new particle, you have to be very sure. But in medicine. We've decided that we will accept um, a, 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 a chance of 5% that the differences in the means or 
the significance of our test is just 5%, okay? That's what we decided in medicine, okay? Or in biology in general, I think, okay? Um, forget about it. Um, if you don't get it, that's not a problem. I'm just, you know, uh, wanted to mention how these people thought about statistical tests and how they did it, especially a t-test, student t-test, which is basically uh, comparing two groups, numerical variable in two groups, okay? Um, what does the B value mean? B value mean just that this, this difference it means probably is um, um, by chance by this value. So the B value is 5%. So uh, it's a 5% that this difference in mean um, is due to chance. Okay. If it is less than 5%, okay. So it's 0 0.1, 0 0.01. So it's by chance, this difference is by chance in 0 uh, 0.01. Okay. That's what B value means. Okay. How the percentage uh, of being uh, this difference or this result is due to chance. And the lower the B value is, the more significant my um, observation or result is. So the more B value is low, the lower, the, the better statistically is my uh, observation or difference. And this is something related to one of the philosophers from the uh, 12, 20th century. I'm not going to speak about the hypothesis testing today, but um, these tests are based on his philosophy, basically. Okay, I will go to speak about these uh, about the null hypothesis and hypothesis testing um, next lecture. Um, but um, as I mentioned. Um, when comparing two groups, numerical variable, we use the student t-test, okay? And and that's the idea beyond student t-test, and I don't want you to remember uh, how it's done and the idea behind this, but it's good to know, okay? It's something related to uh, sampling, population, standard errors, different means, um, uh, how how far is the standard error from the zero and the differences in means and, and all these things, okay? But you don't need to know all of these things. Um, and I'll just mention again, if you're comparing three groups now, it's it, I'm not going to the theory of the test uh, of comparing three groups. So for example, a group playing football, playing basketball, playing uh, volleyball, so I give every each group a number and I need to compare the differences in means um, in their milk consumption. I need to do that and I need to know if this this difference is real, it's not due to chance. We, we do a test, we call it analysis of variance, it depends on the variance um, amongst this, these three groups, okay? And you just call it ANOVA. It just this ANOVA test, I'm not going to, 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 to any details about this ANOVA test, but it is the test uh, used to um, analyze a numerical outcome uh, in more than two groups, okay? And if I have, uh, I want to analyze the um, numerical outcome versus a numerical outcome is the consumption, um, related to coffee consumption or is there any difference that the coffee consumption can affect the milk consumption and if there is an effect is it really uh, a real effect or due to chance we use a test we call it linear regression okay it's a test you put this you put this spreadsheet in the computer and it calculate and give you a b value and tell you if this b value less than uh, five percent or 0.05, that's a statistically significant um, uh, difference, okay? Or effect, the coffee consumption can affect the milk consumption, okay? So why I have 
I've, I've described or, or illustrated the, the uh, theory beyond the t-test because the t-test and the ANOVA test and the linear regression just depend on the, nor the central limit theorem. It's, it's the same idea and you need to know that the linear regression and ANOVA and t-test, they are the same idea and the same concept and depend on the um, normality of the data distribution. Okay, and some people say that the uh, ANOVA and the t-test are special cases of the linear regression. Okay, so uh, they are basically very similar. Okay, my outcome and all of these three tests is numerical. Okay, one of them uh, t-test in two groups, ANOVA in three groups, and linear regression. If I'm going, if I have the exposure as a, a numerical as well. Okay. That's a linear regression. You can see is the height uh, really related to the body weight or not. Um, if you want to plot them, that's the plot. Uh, and this is the formula of the linear regression. That's the outcome, is the weight, which is y. We've mentioned that at the beginning. And that's something called intercept. And that's probably the relation b by x. That's the x you can predict even, actually. Um, the weight from the height, if you want later, okay. And when you put the uh, spreadsheet in the computer with the heights and the weights, it gives you this number, it gives you this number, and give you b value as well, okay. Um, because it describes the relation and it gives you a b value, telling you is this relation is real or due to chance, okay? That's what we put in the computer, uh, and you the formula of the the computer just calculated by itself and give you this this number this number and a b value okay again if you have multiple multiple exposures and one um, numeric outcome you can use the same linear regression but it's multiple linear regression you just put it in the computer and it give you um, um, a, a formula very similar to this one but plus other Bs and X1, X2, X3, according to the the um, to how many variables you have, okay? And do this graph or whatever if you have multiple lines, multiple observations, okay? I, I don't want to go, you know, deeper on these things. Um, that's another term I want you to know before I finish today. Um, it's the correlation. It's the um, relation between two numerical variables how uh, they are correlated or de really related to each other okay so if the weight definitely change with the height this will be a perfect positive correlation so weight is definitely uh, changing with the height in my sample sometimes it might not sometimes other two numerical variable might not really be correlated so the the observations will be scattered like this and sometimes you, the blood pressure, for example, and uh, maybe anything else, blood pressure and uh, blood sugars, for example, in my sample is not related any, at all. So there is no correlation to describe this. So that's the way how to describe the relation uh, or how, how two variables are um, related to each other, and it's different than the regression. These are different things, okay? Um, so things can uh, correlate negatively, can correlate positively, can not have any correlation, and they have a number here to describe the correlation uh, coefficient, okay? Um, if it is uh, positive, so when uh, a variable increases, the other one increases. If it is negative, if a variable increases, the other variable will be decreased, okay? And the number, describe how far they are correlated. If they are not correlated at all, the number will be zero. If they are really very correlated, the number will be one. If they are really correlated as well, the number might be minus one if they are negatively correlated, okay? And they have things in between, basically. Okay, very quickly, very quickly. Um, again, what we've done um, today is, uh, I know uh, it's a lot to take in, but um, it's, it's, it's not difficult. Uh, we took a sample from a population, 
put in the spreadsheet, we have observation and some variables. We've described different types of variables um, and the difference between different types of variables. And then we said our variables, some of them will be outcomes we are inter interested in, and some of them will be exposures. We want to see if there is any effect of these exposures to the outcomes. Um, and some people name things differently, outcomes and exposures. Um, um, and these are the data types, how to display each type of variable. Um, um, that's numerical, this was categorical, numerical, uh, can display it in a curve, can display the numerical data in, in a box and a whisker, can display things related to time in a Kaplan-Meier curve. Okay. And we said this, um, different uh, uh, stages of tumors, a contentious table in categorical versus categorical, uh, numerical versus numerical scatter plot. Uh, that's something very similar to Kaplan-Meier. Uh, how to describe a numerical variable is a center. You need to describe the center. I need to describe uh, the variability. Okay, so center, we have the mean and median. We know when to use the mean, when to use the median. To use the variability, we need can use the interquartile range, um, especially in uh, non-normally distributed data. In normally distributed data, we have the standard deviation. We've got the idea of the standard deviation. And we said, how, how can we be sure about our mean? Is it really, our sample mean is related to the population mean? and that's from where the standard error came and how much our mean is wrong or error which is related to how much is the variability in our sample and how big is our sample okay um and um we've discussed um we have some variables uh, if we have a numerical outcome so today we've discussed the numerical outcome the numerical outcome and how to analyze and to do statistical tests in numerical outcome, okay? Um, and we said, if there's two groups, numerical outcome, we usually use the student t-test, and why it's called student t-test, okay? And how we do it is do it like the differences in means and standard error, and how, uh, is it, uh, uh, are we 95% sure about this uh, differences in mean? And probably we'll have this 95% percent to uh, two and a half percent here and two and a half percent here um what b value means is probably that this this thing is not due to chance or if it is is probably due to chance in less than five percent in cases uh analysis of variance done if we have more than one group or um categorical uh exposure and outcome is numerical we use the analysis of variance and linear regression if both are uh, numerical and uh, if a lot of exposures binary categorical numerical binary all these things can put can be put in a computer and and um, see how much the affect our outcome which is numerical um, and um, and the computer will give us uh, how much these things affect the outcome and give us a b value um uh, how these things are uh, statistically significant or not or due to chance or not and how can two numerical variables be related to each other or correlated to each other and how they are you know have the cohesions or related to each other basically that's what we call correlation and don't get confused about between confusion uh, regression and correlation okay um and that will be it uh for today and we will um, continue again in the next session